sake of the innocent, and I would say for the sake of those most innocent, we should all be unapologetically pro-life. Not pro-birth, per se, but pro-life, the whole person's life, from the womb to the tomb. It's great. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I want you to feel the weight that is now resting on our shoulders. Berlin was separated east from west by a 96-mile-long wall that was there for over 28 years. And it came down, and it's been down longer than it was up. When it came down, East Berliners came across the border and would faint at the sight of all the prosperity of what they'd been missing out. And when Yvette and I toured there, we've been there a couple times, this is what we learned. When the wall came down, the church wasn't ready. It wasn't ready. They were traumatized. What's this going to do to our economy? What's this? And here's ministry opportunities. Go, Lord, if, if, if nothing else, just laying hands on the sick. They weren't ready. Well, been over 49 years since Roe v. Wade happened. Are we ready? Are we ready to be a strength to single mothers? I mean, you don't have to wait nine months to apply this word. You can apply it today. Ready to be a strength to young and old unwed people with child. Are you ready to help? To give a hand? To help them see and experience the power of redemption? While the legal means especially here in Texas, for taking a less difficult way out of a situation. It's been removed. Can we give a hand? By supporting the ministries of places like the Brazos Pregnancy Center and other things. I'll just leave that with you. Earlier last week, I met someone at racetrack to buy them gas. A single mom. She pulled up in her Nissan and pulled the lever to open the little door to get the gas cap out. And I was ready to do the transaction, and I noticed the trunk was open. And I said, oh, you must have pulled the trunk lever too. And I went to push it down, and it wouldn't go down. A hand was holding it up. And I backed off, what's going on here? And she said, it's my mother. She won't get out of the trunk. And I said, well, I can't, I, I'm not going to buy you gas. It's illegal to ride in the trunk, and I don't know what's happening here. She said, Mom, you're going to have to get out of the trunk. He won't get us gas. Leave me alone, leave me alone, was the voice that came from the trunk. So I just lifted the trunk. I said, ma'am, I want to help you, but you're going to have to get out of this trunk and get in the back seat. So finally she did. She got in the back seat and wrapped her towel around her head. We did gas, and I prayed for the young mother. Here she is, not only carrying the weight of her own child, because baby daddy fled the scene, but dealing with a mentally ill mother. May God forgive us for self-righteousness that would cause us to run from opportunities to serve and minister. We want the world to know Jesus, right? But we're going to have to be Jesus. And what did he do for us? He laid down his life. So it couldn't happen at a worse time economically for this thing to happen, but yet it couldn't happen at a better time. His opportunities are all around. Lord, I pray you give us wisdom, give us eyes to see. Lord, in our joy, may we never gloat. But Lord, may we realize that we are called to follow through now on helping those who are vulnerable. Lord, help us look for opportunities to buy gas for single moms, to buy groceries for the same kind of person in the grocery store, to show the love of God to people that are hurting. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that we no longer be distracted by the cultural war, 
but that we stay in the spiritual war and fight for the souls of men. In Jesus' name, amen.